garage ups like the game you are enjoying here in the staff Tell your story so well for the Philly Live Sports Food Broadcast Program. The program allows students to broadcast all the games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to philly.com slash Yeah, I think I'm doing a better job. And that was Bonsall. 
the inside linebacker, big man number 85. He stepped up and really clogged that hole. He had some help from the defensive line of Joe DeGuara. He was lifted down in our stat sheet at 5'10", 279. I say close to the end of the game. He really clogged the hole right there. Did a phenomenal job. Allowed his linebacking sort of step up and make the impact. Yeah, we're going to Christian and really the way they set up the attack in terms 
terms of the screenplay, Coach's worst nightmare is that an eligible man down the field. Often that kind of what happens when an offensive player starts to leap down the field and walk before the ball comes out of the field that time. And right there, every member on that now is just an offensive line for a phenomenal job of staying home, living himself, and that's the time to release the football, and then they just get to rest. They just can follow the clock and the field and the ball is worth it.
Hartman, one of the tackles on that play. He ran down the field for about 18 yards, and nobody could get that. He was just for a blocker, and when it just gets to the once again, he got down on the field. Now, the Cowboys have to make a couple of things 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 to make a couple of
flat out that you can the two wide receivers to each side, and they put a lot of pressure on those inside backers in that defensive line. On the left side of the offensive line, started to see they created uh, a running lane for their quarterback, who really just once he got the snap, took the ball into his arms, and uh, immediately took off. We saw that one from the yard line, so he started to control the ball.
side of that offensive line at Valley Christian. Dude, when that play was going to go, because we saw Garrett Gregory, the outside backer, start to shoot up a little bit.
prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. I guess you're not allowed to be on the menu and do stuff with the camera. <laughs> not the way I wanted to start the game. Man. Yeah, we just want to do Seems like it's going to be a nice one again.
for that play. And that was rough for you. Because at that point, you just want to get the ball in your hands and turn it away. Try to give your defense some room to work with. And it looked like, it, it, as I recall, it was driven by the way it was the first time But that ball just slipped right through the game. He elevated a little bit. He had to pick up and grab it. But it wasn't way over his head. It was just kind of where the ball was placed in the long time. You can take a seat at it.
Hey, um, so I'm getting told that uh, the people are hearing, when they're hearing the sound online, it sounds like our youngsters are in the water. Hey guys. Okay.
ball down inside the 18 and 19 yard line. First down marker at the 19. Athletic League went two and five. Bellerman, of course, ran the table to win the regular season. Aptos Mariners seven and zero to capture the Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League and defend their league title. Mariners trailing thirty-four to twenty. Yes, it's a kick taken by the up man at the thirty, trying to cut outside. And out of bounds, pushed out of bounds at the 42. So Valley, again, certainly has had ideal field position all game long. Excellent field position, really. If you think about the midfield starting point here outside of the miscue on the punt where it went through the punter's hand, Nicholson, and they got it at, their, at, at the Mariner four-yard line. To start at the 42 or around that area is, is devastating if you're a Mariner fan because it just gives Valley Christian that much less room to work with in that powerful rushing attack that they have. 414 left to go in the third. Valley has not scored. In this half. And the run. You see the Mariners players just being dragged about. Yeah, Severson with the carry. Adam Vasquez. Big number 63 blocking downfield, doing a great job paving the way right there. It looked like it's just a simple run play. Well, guess what? When you can pick up eight yards every time, uh, that simple run play becomes key. And that's what I'm talking about from Valley Christian. Just utilize what you have and chew up as much clock as you possibly can. Ball mark just short of midfield. Second and two for the Warriors. Johnson off the right tackle. Cuts out to the outside, still on his feet. Cut back to the middle, dragging Mariners as he go. Kirk Johnson, the super soft, rattles off another big run. He just broke three tackles 
on that play. Ran into his own guy across the far sideline and then cut it back in. Kept pumping his legs. I mean, there's so many things that I could pick out in that one play that impressed me about Kirk Johnson. We have something that we're witnessing here, Kirsten, that is special because this kid is only a sophomore. He's gonna be a huge name in years to come here in the San Francisco Bay Area. A 28 yard run by Johnson, just over three minutes to go. First and 10 from the Aptos, 23. And the handoff to Johnson once again, perhaps, or excuse me, Lemus. Lemus getting a few, a handful of carries, but he always seems able to collect four or five yards. He does, and, and that's kudos to his offensive line. You figure when Lemus comes in, you know, it's a change of pace guy. He's a senior at about 170 pounds. It just kind of adds to that rushing attack. And Lemus is also on the rushing chart. He's kind of down the ways a little bit, but he averages, you know, a, a, around 12 yards a game. I know that may not sound like a whole lot, but when you have those two key backs, it always helps out. And the Mariners doing a better job on that play. Severson tackled in the backfield as we near the two minute mark here in the third quarter. McIntyre heading over towards that near sideline, talking with head coach Mike Machado. And what they do is they, they go over the play selection. He'll get the call in from the coaches that are next to us here at the press box at Independence High School. But what they're doing is they're taking a lot of time. They're utilizing every second on that play clock because they know with a 14 point advantage and the way their ground game has been moving, this game is in their advantage. Mariners trying to get a player off the field. They do as third and seven, McIntyre goes to the air. Novak, who was banged up toward the end of the first half in to make the catch, however short of a first down. And that was kudos to Elijah Martle, or Marta, I beg your pardon, across the far side, coming up and tackling Bryce Novak. He just ran a little hitch route, you know, a three back to one, caught the ball, turned to the outside, but was met immediately by Marta. Minute 12 left to go in the third. Koenig, Kronig in for the field goal. This would be a 33-yard attempt. However, McIntyre is the holder. Remember that. Kronig with a chance to put three on. Good snap. Plenty of distance. It's good, a 33-yard attempt by Kronig. Valley takes a 37-20 lead. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here this afternoon? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Sean and I laughing a bit. The coaching staff for Valley Christian telling us before the game, they couldn't even estimate what the range was for their field goal kicker because they said, we don't even remember the last time we attempted a field goal. Well, just so they know, Cody Kronig is good from 33 yards out. And they almost looked a little puzzled, like, well, I don't know, it's a good question. And, sh and sure enough, like you said, right here, we know the kid's got a little bit of range on him. If he can drill 30 plus, hey, that's a heck of a kicker at the high school level. Epp in to kick off. And he gets a boot in it. Once again, it's a touchback for the Mariners. Aptos will have 37 seconds left in the third quarter, trailing Valley Christian in a 37-20 to 20 ball game, a CCS Division III title on the line. Sean, Valley Christian has led throughout. That hasn't seemed to be in question. However, I think this is a much more entertaining game than perhaps the score shows. And a lot of people throughout the Bay Area expected this one to be a blowout. And I tell you what, 17 points, it's not. It's still a very close game. The Mariners are still in this matchup. They're going to have a chance to work the ball here one last time before the third quarter comes to a close. But Kirsten, let's take a look at the starting field position. Valley Christian, previous series 42. Mariners, 20. Huge difference. Special teams factor. And the pitch coming around the left side on the sweep as Aptos has gone to that play often and Eli Ungerecht with the carry. 
able to pick up about five yards right there for Ungarek, a player that has been switching up the workload. Marta has had a chance to get a couple carries, and then even Andrade, as we see a Valley Christian player come towards the sideline. That's Garrett Gregory, one of these starting outside linebackers. Gregory, whose family right in front of us wearing their Gregory sweatshirts. He walking off of his own volition, however. Second and six for the Mariners, 13 seconds remaining. This should potentially be the final play of the third quarter. And once again, Ungerecht with the carry. And he falls forward for a couple extra yards. Looked like after he stopped, but no whistles were blown. That was the final play of the third quarter. Aptos has been able to get into the end zone, but Valley Christian made such a statement in the first half. Valley leads it 37 to 20. One more quarter left. Can the Warriors hold on for the Central Coast Section Division Three Championship? Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here this afternoon? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. And folks, stay tuned for the playonsports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this football matchup. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Kirsten Fairchild, Sean Hennessy, Brad Youngquist is our producer. Joey Kolber is our camera crew today. A big thanks to all the folks at Central Coast Section, including Nancy Lazenby Blazer and Ray Mialovich and all the fine workers here, many of whom have volunteered their time today. And, of course, big thanks to the folks here at Independence High School as well. It is our privilege and pleasure to bring you high school sports here on PlayOnSports.com. Thank you for joining us all season long, and make sure you tune in as we make the march to Carson, the CIF State Championships in just a couple of weekends. We'll also be at the Northern California and Southern California region next week. Fourth quarter just about to get underway. Aptos has their work cut out for them. Trailing 37-20. Start of the fourth quarter. Valley Christian on top. Sweep around the right side. First down yardage and more. And you just see the determination by the Mariners. They are sticking with this rushing game. It has been their bread and butter all season long and they've also brought Marta into more and more duty as this game goes on. And that last play was all Marta dragging defenders down field, lowering his shoulder and keeping his legs churning. A phenomenal play by Marta. First and 10 for the Mariners. Mariners. Sweep around the left side. Here comes Ungerich trying to turn the corner. And again, we see that great lateral east to west pursuit by the Warriors. Adam Bol uh, Bolalomi right there in that play. He closed in almost like he was running a 40 time. I mean, he just closed in along that near sideline to make that tackle. A phenomenal play because the ball carrier on that side could have had at least 10 to 15 extra yards downfield. It was such a clutch tackle along the near sideline. Bellamwani, a standout basketball, a baseball player as well. McInerney on the halfback option goes to the air and just out of the range. Good play call, good idea. However, a little short on the execution. I like the fact that they're looking downfield. They're trying to really stretch the defense out, and that play was a simple hitch and go on the outside or the deep outside portion of the field, except the only problem was that Alex Joe didn't have enough time to really put a good arm into it because he was under pressure. And that's got to go back to the offensive line for the Mariners. They need to hold up a little bit more and give time to Alex Joe. Third and six for Aptos. The pitch to McInerney. McInerney cutting back, still on his feet, breaking toward the outside, and he will be short of a first down. I tell you what, McInerney doing a beautiful job not going down after the first initial hit, getting yards after contact. That impresses coaches. It impresses viewers. And right there, we get a chance to see McInerney get struck at least two times and then pick up some more yardage. Fourth and three for the Mariners. The ball spotted at the 41. Aptos to go for it. Joe with the quick snap. Aptos should get it. Ball comes loose. Valley picks it up. Valley at the 30, at the 20, at the 7. It's McIntyre. Touchdown, Warriors. Warriors. 
Well, Cody Campbell, 22 for Valley Christian, stripped that ball. He stripped the ball away and then afterwards pointed at it. And what happened, the Warriors pick it up and rush it in for a touchdown. Cody Campbell forcing the fumble and getting a defensive touchdown for Valley Christian. What a play. McIntyre stays on to hold a 45-yard run back after the fumble recovery. It's been a busy afternoon for Kronig. It's through. Valley Christian has scored more than 50 points in its previous two playoff games. They are currently 44-20 to with 10-17 left to go in this ball game. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Valley Christian, the school was established in 1959. There have been four CCS titles. This is the ninth appearance in going for title number five. Back in 2002, three, four, and five. That is four-year span is when all four of Valley's titles came through. Aptos, one title and three appearances. Back in 2003, the Mariners playing uphill, trailing 44 to 20. And Kirsten, that defensive play, that was a heartbreaker if you're a Mariner fan. That really shifted the momentum back over to Valley Christian. Especially after the first down look to have been achieved as you see the bobbled return, but then recovered and across the 30 as the Warriors go back to work on defense. You know, they've known for their offense in such a competitive West Catholic Athletic League. They are known for producing the best offense, but it's been their defense here today that has been just as impressive. Yeah, and I want to go back to that last play briefly. It was it was Cody Campbell. He stripped that ball away, coming up, form tackle, Kirsten getting both hands in there. I'll use my old football coach's analogy and using the gunslingers. Getting your hand in there and wrapping up, and he forced that ball loose and the rest of his defense did the rest. Mariners, first and 10 from the 31, flag thrown. And the run up the middle for four or five. And we'll wait for our officiating crew to chat about it. As Sean has mentioned at the conclusion of this game, we will have our playonsports.com player of the game as well as our post game show. And then back online at 7 p.m. and that will be the opening kickoff between Milpitas and San Benito. If you live anywhere in the San Benito area or south of that, you refer to the hay balers as Hollister. Hollister, that's right. The hay balers and balers for short. It should be a great matchup. Uh, Seven o'clock kickoff right here on Play on Sports. A penalty going against the Warriors. Aptos 10.05 left to go, trailing by 24. Mariners on a 10-game win streak. Valley on a three-game win streak. As Joe goes to the air, Bonsall comes back to make the catch. This has worked so well today. Joe to Bonsall. Shall we have seen it a little more, or is Aptos using it just enough? I was just going to say I'm, I'm shocked a little bit that we haven't seen it more from the get-go. I, I expected to see this really towards the first quarter because now we're starting to see Bonsall just really tear up that defensive secondary, that being at least his fifth grab here in this football game. He has the sure hands for the Mariners as the run up the left side. Again, another gain. Aptos able to chip away for the most part. They've turned the ball over on downs but two times, but Ungerecht um, chipping away. We must mention Alec Bonsall has a brother on the team, Jason Bonsall. So two Bonsalls on the Mariners. Always nice to have more than one. <laughs> one Bonsall's not enough. Marta with the carry. And again, that Valley defense. It gives, but it certainly doesn't give way. No, they, they bend, but they don't break. And now on a third down, Aptos 
go back to the, that air attack. Let's see where they line up. Let's see where they line up Alec Bonsall. If, if they're going to put him as a flanker, which they have, or if they're going to utilize him at the tight end position. Uh, you've seen his routes primarily be seam and corner routes. Let's watch. Well, and he's got such a great size advantage against this secondary as Joe calls his own number. We haven't seen that too often by Alex Joe, the junior quarterback. And Joe's been under pressure a little bit tonight, but when he has time to get rid of the football, he throws a pretty clean ball. He throws a pretty clean ball. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a junior. He'll have a chance to perfect his form a little more during this offseason, and you can expect big things next year when he turns to a senior level. 8.30 left to go in the ball game. First and 10 for the Mariners. And another running play. Another running play just gives Valley Christian the advantage that much more when you have a 24-point advantage uh, and you're a team like Aptos and you keep the ball on the ground, you're churning up clock. That is in favor of Valley Christian. You need to change things up a little bit. Maybe a screen play here. And a run by Marta. Marta tumbles forward. And... We'll wait for the measurement here, or for the indication. Very close to the first down marker. Still waiting for a measurement as our referee, Tom Gersey, calls an official timeout on the field. 7.55 left to go. Valley up 46 to 20 on the Aptos Mariners. This is the fourth meeting between these two programs. Aptos came into the game leading the series with a 2 to 1 edge. 2 to 1 edge, like you mentioned. It's going to be very close when they bring these chains out and this is a huge measurement uh, for a couple different reasons if if they don't convert here well it's going to keep the clock going and it'll probably force them to maybe do a small run play to pick up that yard if they do convert they can go back to that pass attack and really spread that offense out something they don't normally do they keep it in that kind of uh, wing t or double tight end look but i expect them to kind of spread it out a little bit more and they do pick up the first down now that the officials bring out the chains First down indeed for the Mariners. Aptos again averaging 36 points a game this season and 428 yards of total offense. This a team that has five new starters on the offensive line last this year after graduating 24 players. Wow. First and 10 from the Valley 23. Joe on the option. Here's Marta. Marta cutting back and falling forward. Again, another four or four, five yard gain. Four or five yards. Great. It, 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 it says something about your, your, your rushing attack, but Kirsten, that clock continues to roll, and right now it's your biggest enemy if you're an Aptos Mariners fan. Actually, three on that play for Marta. Another run, and this time off the left side. Clock nearing the seven-minute mark. As Marta pops up, Marta, one of the defensive leaders on this team, getting his turn here on offense. Valley Christian with athletes all over the place. They step up in key moments. Linebackers, running backs, doing a nice job here, making it hard for the Mariners. McInerney trying to cut back on third and three. This will bring up fourth and short for the Mariners. And, uh, you know, a nice little tidbit of information. 17 members of the class of 2012 for Valley Christian uh, will sign their letter of intent to play college sports. That, that's pretty impressive. From a single high school, 17 members from a high school going off to play baseball, water polo, volleyball, says something about your school. On fourth and two, Marta. And the Mariners have earned their first down. And yes, Sean, we've been asking a bunch of different schools how many players they've signed, and that certainly has been the biggest total. And congratulations to the Valley Christian Athletic Director, Jolene Fugate, who is also the girls' soccer coach. She has one player going to Pepperdine and a junior who is being looked at by Tennessee. Joe 
and that ball That's is intercepted. picked off. A delayed reaction, but the interception and Aptos's hope thwarted once again. Jay McIntyre, the quarterback for Valley Christian, and if your quarterback Alex Joe. You do the worst possible thing. You roll out. You never throw across your body. And that's exactly what he did on that last play. He threw it right into the hands of the opposing quarterback who was playing free safety, Jay McIntyre. McIntyre to stretch out a little bit, but he caught it and brought it in. And he showed off his athleticism, diving in the end zone and intercepting that pass. I tell you, Jay McIntyre knows the San Jose State head coach is here watching this ball game. He's certainly making impression, and I say that with tongue in cheek, as he is the, son, the coach's son on the first play from scrimmage on this drive. Valley Christian, everything going the Warriors' way. Can you believe it? An 80-yard run. And whistles blow. I don't see flags. Now I do. There's a flag back at the 35. Severson may have to try once again to hit that magic number 30 rushing touchdowns. He currently sits at 29. You've got a good eye because the I officiating crew were looking like it was a penalty, but that penalty right on the line. And you can hear the Valley Christian fans react. And this is a touchdown. W wait. Uh, okay, I think our officiating crew making some signals yeah. signaled holding against the Mariners meant to say holding against the Warriors. Well, Kirsten, I was going to say one of two things there because I saw the flag back and I saw the side judge coming towards the middle of the, of the field waving his hands over his head, which indicates play dead, stop the clock. One of two things, holding call downfield. Severson may have gotten away with a little bit of showboating across the far side of the field, doing his best primetime Deion Sanders uh, slow step into the end zone. It, it was minuscule. It wasn't anything big or heavy, but he did slow up a little bit to kind of strut his stuff, but no call. And instead, it was a holding penalty on the offensive line. Clock shows 5.55. Still waiting for the down markers here, Sean, to... To reset. Um, to reset. Um... It'll stay back at the 20, it appears, after the hold. Race the play, erase the memory. Here goes Severson again. Aptos certainly would like to. Huh. Severson cutting back the other way. Stiff arms, but that will not elude the grab of Marta. Marta showing his athleticism to bring down Severson. Great job by Marta. Like you said, showing his athleticism. How in the heck? Did Severson get out of that play, going towards the far side of the field, stops, reverses course, changes direction. I mean, he, he sees a wall. He goes to his backup plan. He finds plan B in the backup pocket, and he makes it happen. The kid is so elusive. Clock continues to run, nearing the 515 mark. Four-yard gain by Severson. Severson with not any time to even cool his jets, and it looks like he's going to walk off right now. Head to the sideline, Ryan Severson, who should be at San Jose State next fall. And the inside handoff as Valley Christian first carrier is by Nick Hindman. Hindman into the ball. Hindman getting his first carry. Yep here in the ball game, and like you said, giving uh, Severson a breather now here in the fourth quarter, 4.33 to go. I wouldn't be shocked, Kirsten, if head coach Mike Machado uh, opted to give his seniors some playing time here, this being their final football game of the season. Heinemann a senior, 5'10", 190. 4.15 and counting on third and one. Valley calls a timeout. Timeout on the field, Valley Christian getting closer and closer to celebrating its first CCS title since 2005. They lead the Mariners 44 to 20. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. 
keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And folks, stay tuned for the playonsports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Big thanks to Eric Scherenberg and Jolene Fugate, the athletic directors of Valley Christian High School, as well as Mark Dorfman, the athletic director of Aptos High School. Alongside Sean Hennessy, I'm Kirsten Fairchilds. Brad Youngquist is our producer. Joey Colbert is on camera. Out of the timeout, Valley, third and one, up 44 to 20, with four and change left in the ball game. And the run by Johnson assures another fresh set of downs for the Warriors. Warriors keeping that ball on the ground here. It's such an impressive offense. I know they had six losses in the year. They had a very tough schedule going up against the WCAL. They went two and five in league play, but it shows you just how dominant they are to work through the playoffs like they did. They were able to take care of Burlingame, 56-14, and then they knocked off Sobrato, 52-42, to putting up over 50 points in back-to-back -back playoff games, and right now they stand at 44, a chance to possibly make it three straight playoff games with 50 or more points. And flag thrown. Ball spotted at the 31. Valley Christian came into this bracket with a four and six record and the number three seed. It says something about their strength of schedule. Also. Absolutely. And, and Coach Machado hinted that to me over the phone. You know, he, he told me that looking at the high schools here in the CCS, the North Coast section, the SAC Joaquin, his team was considered to be by many uh, in the media the second toughest schedule outside of their normal WCAL opponents they have to face off against each and every week. Delay of game, the penalty, first and 15 for the Warriors. Johnson stumbles, regains his footing. Johnson off to the races. Four Mariners giving chase. He's at the 20, the 10. The sophomore sensation continues. He opened the game with a scoring run. Comes back with another touchdown, Warriors. Kirk Johnson just put on a highlight as a sophomore. Tucked that ball in the right hand. Used that left arm to pump. Did you get a chance to see that? That left arm just in full motion. He looked like a sprinter in the 100-meter dash. He just took off. Nobody touched him once he broke away from that linebacking core. He was gone to the house. I mean, you could tell this kid's got speed. He looks like a track star out there when he touches the ball. He opened the game with a 69-yard run. That was 74 yards. Kroenig in for the point after. He has been a very busy kicker this afternoon. And Valley has reached the 50-point mark for every single playoff game. This perhaps the sweetest Valley Christian. It's good. 51 to 20. The Warriors making a statement and continuing to make a statement in this Division Three bracket. Valley Christian making a statement. WCAL schools making a statement. This, is, this will be an impressive victory for Valley Christian. Uh, and I hinted on it a moment ago. Could they eclipse the 50-point mark for the third straight playoff game? The answer is yes, and, and, and they did. So impressive, this offense. Defense stepped up big time. They got a couple points on the board as well. Special teams put them in phenomenal field position down on the field to start their offensive series. It's an all-around team effort, Kirsten, that really shows why this team is so dominant, and they're on their way to capturing that CCS D3 title. 3.28 left in the ball game. Epp has it teed up. Valley leading 51-20. Give Aptos. kudos uh, to Aptos. They had a heck of a year as well. Don't count that team out. They've got a lot of seniors coming back next year. Ungericht gives chase. Picks the ball up at the four. And shoved out of bounds. Inside the 15, the Aptos Mariners riding a 10-game winning streak. Last year when they lost to St. Ignatius in the first round, their head coach, Randy Blankenship, who teaches weight training at Aptos High, for three weeks solid every single day, his players did nothing but squats. Not given any time off, three weeks' worth of squats, not only as 
a physical test, but I'm sure a team bonding experience as well. Randy Blankenship, 39 years coach. Randy Blankenship, 39 years coaching in Northern California, including at such highly regarded programs as Nevada Union. Then he was at Clovis West. And Sean, while he was at Clovis West, from 1991 to 1998, went 90 wins to 14 losses and four central section titles. He has more than 250 wins as a high school coach. This one will go into his record as a loss, but the Mariners have certainly kept their heads high and fought hard in this ball game. And they have every reason to keep their heads high. They have fought hard, they've showed pride. I mean, this is the second time uh, that this school has appeared in the section title in its 43-year history. And before uh, Nevada Union, before Clovis West, uh, Coach Blankenship was down at a small school in the San Diego section, Fallbrook, and he dominated uh, the San Diego section schools with his Delaware wing T offense in the San Diego section for a number of years. He was very proud uh, what he did at Fallbrook High School and then making his way to Nevada Union, Clovis West, and here at Aptos High School. You won't hear the last of him because he's a veteran coach He's got about 40 years of football knowledge, and the great thing is he's passing it along to his team. And, you know, the Mariner faithful, the Mariner players, they're going to remember every practice, every game, every opportunity they had to play under Coach Blankenship. Under three minutes, second and 13 for Aptos. And Valley saying that the ball came loose, and it certainly did. The Warriors, third turnover for Aptos. The Warriors recover once again and just to follow up with Coach Blankenship left the Madeira job before heading to Aptos. He played so many positions while he was a high schooler at Plosser and then at Tascadero High School. The Warriors of Valley Christian take over. 242 left to go in the ball game. 51 to 20 the score. What an afternoon for this team from San Jose. Valley Christian, everyone knows about them. They're one of the larger WCAL schools in terms of popularity. They're up with the Bellarmines, the Middies, the St. Ignatius. They, they come to play. They have a lot of talent, and it shows. And a new quarterback in, the sophomore Michael Machado, wearing number 15, taking the snap. And uh, Michael Machado, a sophomore coming in and taking his first snap at the varsity level. So an opportunity for Valley Christian to get players in. As looks like actually we have two number 15s on our roster. I believe this might be mm -hmm. Jonah Moore, Sean. A couple of a uh, duplications on both these rosters. So let's just, I believe this would be Jonah Moore as the sweep to the right side. And no signal yet. Our, the ball carrier with 152 left. And to rule him down inside the one. Hard to tell who that was taking the call. It looked like Nick Reynolds perhaps. Well, and we've got a Valley Christian player down. It is Nick Hindman down on the field. After he returned to the huddle, he fell down. So he w is being attended to 152 left to go in the ball game. Valley up 51-20. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Stay tuned for the playonsports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Ball spotted at the one. Heidman still being attended to. After we meet our player of the game, Sean and I will be back for a post-game show. And then at 7 p.m., it's another kickoff here from Independence High School. Milpitas, the very entertaining Milpitas team, stocked with a lot of talent, will take on the San Benito Hay Balers, known for playing as one unit. 
hard-nosed football from the hay balers, a little bit of flash and dash from Milpitas. I think it'll all add up to a great evening. Two, two contrasting styles. The hay balers smash mouth, the defense wrap them up uh, with Coach Chris Cameron. Uh, many a year down there at San Benito High School, and then you've got Milpitas, who brings that shotgun, almost a, uh, a wing T style look. When you see it later tonight, folks, it's impressive the way <laughs> Milpitas uh, is able to work the ball down the field, but we should be in store for a great matchup for that Division One finale. That's right, Kelly King, the head coach for Milpitas, certainly another one of the coaches that have had such illustrious careers here in the San Francisco Bay Area. While we have this opportunity, we'd like to thank again Nancy Lazenby Blazer and Ray Mialovich and the rest of the assistant commissioners and the staff of the Central Coast section as well as the staff here at Independence High School. We're at the Lee Evans Jim Plunkett International Sports Stadium here on Independence High School, a school that has an enrollment of roughly 4,000 students and we thank everyone for being so hospitable as we were here last week as well. And CCS deciding to utilize Independence High School to host the final uh, football games of the year for Divisions 1, 3. Uh, it's such a beautiful complex, Kirsten. Brand new, pretty much brand new field turf they have here at Independence High School. Less than a year old. What, what impresses me about this uh, arena they have at Independence High School is the bleachers. The length of the bleachers they have yes. stretches from about... Oh, 10 yards past the left end zone to 10 yards past the right end zone. About 120 yards worth of bleacher space. It shows why the CCS wanted to utilize this venue. And the training staff actually asking a couple of players, Johnson, to come out and help. And this has got to be heartbreaking. I mean, again, we have so many wheelchairs or crutches on this Valley Christian sideline. They have had broken bones. They've had so many tough injuries within the past few weeks as Hindman is helped off, obviously, to a round of applause. And a senior hobbling, barely putting any weight on that left foot. Nice to see the Valley Christian teammates assisting him off the field. A, a senior, he'll remember this victory. He will also remember the injury, I can guarantee you that. First and goal from the one for Valley. Minute 50 left to go. Moore in at quarterback. As it looks like they're going to line up and chew the clock down to the very last second and then take a knee. No need to score and put up any more points right here. Very classy if that is indeed the case from Coach Machado. And they do just that. Still 90 seconds left to go on the clock. Valley Christian will improve to seven and six on the season with the victory. Aptos's season will end at 10 and three. Again, as far as the Northern California regional playoffs are concerned, St. Ignatius, I believe, is the only team yep. that is guaranteed to play next week. St. Ignatius beating Bellarmine in overtime last night. They will either go open or Division One. As you see the Gatorade bath the Gatorade on head coach. Gatorade bath for Coach Machado. They didn't wait until the game was over. Still, the go, spot, ball sp still spotted at two. Still plenty of time left as Moore takes the knee again. And now we're nearing. And then if once wasn't enough, how about twice as Valley Christian 27 seconds and counting. The Warriors celebrate. What a statement made in this D3 bracket by the team from San Jose. Put up 56 points in the first half. Excuse me, in the first ball game, 52 points in the semifinals, and now a 51 to 20 victory, picking up their first CCS championship since 2005. This is the fifth CCS title in the history of a school known for excelling at so many sports. Don't you dare go away. We will have our PlayOnSports.com player of the game, and then Sean and I will be back for our post-game show, Valley Christian, the Central Coast Section Division Three champs for 2012. 
one match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. One match away from 
immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. At this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. away from immortality. 
This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. Back in Independence High School, we're here with our play on sports.com player of the game from the victorious Valley Christian Warriors. It's the junior quarterback, Jay McIntyre. What an afternoon Jay has had. He has thrown, been, you were seven of eight for 117 yards, three touchdown passes, had an interception in the end zone, had a fumble recovery. He ran back for 45 yards. All in all, a spectacular day as Valley Christian wins its first CCS title since 2005 with a 51 20 win over the Aptos Mariners. Jay, first of all, congratulations. How much did this mean to your team? You came in with a losing record, yet had the number three seed. I'm sure you had a lot of doubters, and here you were able to put up more than 50 points in every single playoff win. Yeah, I mean, this season's been a tough one at the beginning. I mean, injuries. I mean, I started out, I got a concussion in the first game. I got knocked out, but uh, uh, we have plenty of guys on crutches. I mean, We've lost five games by three points. I mean, but, uh, you know, we have a bunch of uh, good individuals in that locker room. And uh, when uh, we needed to, we put it together. And uh, we happened to uh, uh, come out on top. So it was really rewarding to send the seniors out this way and, uh, and uh, start on top next year. So. Well, you mentioned the injuries. I have never been to a football game where I've seen so many people either in wheelchairs or on crutches on the sideline. This has continued throughout the season. How has your team been able to gel to have that chemistry on the field when you've lost so many players to injury? I mean, there, we got guys that stepped in and uh, made plays, and uh, um, that's just how we do it. I mean, like in scout team, those guys that were scout team at the beginning of the year were uh, playing today. I mean, and they made big plays, and everybody steps up, and uh, we happened to come on top, so it was good. What did Aptos present problem-wise for you all today? Uh, I mean, they run that wing tee, and it's 
it's hard to see the ball sometimes. And uh, I mean, we we scored on them pretty much when we wanted to. I mean, there was a couple times in the second half, but uh, all in all, I thought we did well. I mean, Aptos gave us a little problems there for a second, but uh, we came up on top pretty good. So. We're here with our play on sports.com player of the game, Jay McIntyre, the junior quarterback for Valley Christian. Jay, so much attention, deservedly so, has been given to your running backs, Ryan Severson and Kirk Johnson. Maybe you've been overshadowed a little bit. You really made such a great statement in this game. What can you say about your offensive unit? I mean, uh, we're a talented group of guys. I mean, it all starts with our offensive line, though. I mean, without our offensive line, we wouldn't be able to run for uh, – how many yards you run for because I, I I don't even know I lost count but uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan's a great player and uh, Kirk's a great player and I'm gonna have another year with Kirk next year and I mean we're just I mean our fullbacks we've been through min injuries but everybody steps in and uh, they got the job done I mean it's, it's a group effort on offense and uh, you know, everybody plays their role, and I happen to have a bigger role today, so it was good. So. Well, and I would be remiss without mentioning your performance on defense. Uh, my understanding is you don't get – you haven't gotten as much playing time at defense, but here you shine the interception in the end zone and then the fumble recovery, run it back 45 yards. On top of all that, you're the holder for the kick unit. I mean, you really have put in such an all-around performance. What does it mean to be part of this Valley Christian defense? Uh, I mean, it means a lot. I mean, I really wanted to come out, and uh, they gave me the spot to uh, come out there and uh, um, play safety today. And uh, I busted my butt out there, and I happened to come up with good, good plays to help us win the game. So it was good. Jay McIntyre, our play on sports.com player of the game. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Sean Hennessy and I will be back. We will continue with our play on sports.com post game show from Independence High School. This D3 title was decided. Valley Christian, the number three seed, wins its first championship since 2005 with a 51 to 20 victory over the, third, uh, the fifth seeded Aptos Mariners. Sean, I'll be back to wrap up this action and also preview the D1 game between Mill. Petis and San Benito, which is coming up at 7 p.m. Don't you dare go away. We'll see you more on PlayOnSports.com. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Back now at Independence High School in San Jose Valley Christian, the 2012 Central Coast Section Division III champions with a 51-20 victory over the Aptos Mariners of Santa Cruz County. Sean Hennessy, Kirsten Fairchild, thank you for joining us. We just heard from our play on sports.com player of the game, Jack M Jay McIntyre, the quarterback. What an effort he had out there. Valley led 34-13 at the break. Aptos managed just one score in the second half when they were forced to play catch up. Talks a lot about Valley Christian's defense and Jay McIntyre. We know about the offensive efforts, the touchdown passes that he threw. I was curious to see what he thought about his defensive performance, Kirsten. He had that big pick in the end zone, crowd erupted, diving, elevating off the ground, picking the ball off. I asked him, I said, was that your first time playing safety? And he kind of shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, kind of, you know, play a little bit of corner, but he had a, he did a phenomenal job on defense, a, a, a phenomenal job on offense and all around 
all-around great effort by Jay McIntyre, and it shows why everyone was talking about this young man before the game even started. Well, and I kind of teased him a little bit because Ryan Severson and Kirk Johnson has – They've gotten so much press, and deservedly so. I mean, the, they're considered the best two-back tandem, I think, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And when you think about the teams, that's really saying something. There's so much talent in so many of these teams. But they make that. it was a great three-pronged attack today. It was. They utilized everyone in their offensive arsenal. And, and Severson is well known. How about that rush? by Johnson down the near sideline towards the end of the game where he broke it away over 60 yards. I mean, my goodness, he looked like a track star the way the young man was pumping his arms down the field. Uh, you know, if I'm a Valley Christian fan and I get a chance to look forward to seeing Kirk Johnson, uh, you know, this year, his sophomore year, guess what? You got two more years left to watch this young man. He's going to be something special for Valley, uh, Valley Christian fans. And if you're an opposing WCAL school, keep your eye on Kirk Johnson. He will be a target. That young man is a speedster. Well, and McIntyre back for another year as well. And for the Aptos Mariners, coming in on a 10-game winning streak, knowing they were going to play such a run-dominated team, the Mariners, I think, suffered from some miscues early. They turned it over. They had the problem with a snap to the punter. You kind of think if those things wouldn't have happened, who knows? Yeah, they had, they had a couple of mishaps. They had a couple of key turnovers and key situations. Um, the special teams really put a halt in their offensive attack and I kind of pinpointed at it um, towards the latter portion of the third quarter where I said take a look at their starting field position and that was really the driving force behind the whole game uh, the Mariners were starting around their own 20 whereas Valley Christian would get some phenomenal returns or turnovers around midfield and that really made the difference here tonight because Valley Christian was able to capitalize on it and they've shown they've been able to do that all year because they go up against a very very tough WCAL schedule they know how to bounce back they are determined uh, um, and they control the ball. They control the time of possession. They did everything right here tonight. Seven of the eight West Catholic Athletic League teams made the playoffs. One defeated another last night in the Open Championship in overtime, St. Ignatius beating Bellarmine. Valley Christian wins today. St. Francis will be in action at 7 p.m. tonight versus Los Gatos. We will have the call of the 7 p.m. game here at Independence High School where a West Catholic Athletic League team will not win, I guarantee it, because one is not playing. We have Milpitas versus San Benito. What a contrasting game style-wise this should be. For sure. Milpitas, you're talking about a spread attack, uh, a, a quarterback game that utilizes the playmakers around them. And when you watch their offensive style, it's going to be kind of weird at first. You're going to see some uh, some tailbacks, some, full, some fullbacks lined up at the guard position or behind the guard, I should say. And on the flip side, for San Benito out of Hollister, the old hay balers, those guys are ground and pound smash mouth defenders contrasting styles we're going to see chris cameron kelly king head coaching staffs it's going to be a fun game d1 coming up at seven o'clock two public schools we're expecting a packed house here at independence high school and, and the storms are coming the you storm can. cellar as you hear that's a little windy here a little rain expected so our apologies for that final thoughts from this one sean an amazing game i i, I really give uh, kudos to the mariners they, they showed up they played with pride and that was one of my keys to the game i know they had a lot of turnovers and they lost here uh this afternoon but they showed a lot of pride they did not quit they did not give up they they put the ball through the air um, and they utilized their throwing attack even bigger kudos to Valley Christian they know what they wanted to do they wanted to end the year in a high note they came into this game six and six they got that final W to come out on a winning record and they captured the CCSD three title most importantly on behalf of Sean Hennessy our producer Brad Youngquist our cameraman Joey Colbert I'm Kirsten Fairchild thank you so much for joining us for the Central Coast Section Division three championship game Valley Christian 51 Aptos 20 the Warriors celebrate the fifth CCS title in the football program's history over at Valley Christian in San Jose. Back at 7 p.m. for the D1 title, Milpitas San Benito. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this.